Hey, it's your boy Garrett. Let's talk levels in Photoshop. This is a fundamental topic, so you better know this. All right, let's get into it. This is a histogram. It graphs how many pixels you have at each value along the spectrum from white to black. Let's say that I have a solid dark gray image. Well, then I just get a spike at that one value. If I have a gradient from black to that gray, you can see that the pixels are evenly distributed along those values. Why should you care? Well, because you need to pay attention to the contrast in your images. Look at this. Some hipster asshole on the internet took this photo. Pretty cool, right? Wrong. It's not cool. It's too hazy. It's low contrast. And even when I hit auto contrast, Photoshop still doesn't know how to fix the problem here. So let's try to fix it ourselves. Open up your levels. And uh, you see what's wrong with this? There are gaps at the top and bottom of the light dark spectrum here, where the extreme lights and the extreme darks are not represented in this photo. So let's move our inputs closer to the center to hit those values. And then I might just put the midpoint a little to the left just to make it lighter overall. So now the contrast looks pretty normal. Compare that to the original, which is too hazy. Which do you prefer? Now, if you like the hazy one, by all means, go to your levels and pull your outputs in closer to the center. Then you're going to cut off all the lights and darks. See those gaps? Or, uh, if you wanted super high contrast, let's see what happens when we bring the inputs in too tight. Well, shit, now we've got clipping. Clipping is when something is blown out to the point where you flatten your values and you lose visual information in your image. See that? Those are the clipped areas. They're too dark. It's just all shadows. And sometimes you want dramatic shadows like that. But you're going to lose detail, so you got to be careful. For all you musicians out there, I can draw a comparison to audio clipping. You know, when you boost your sound up to the max and you, it's all distorted. The difference with clipping and Photoshop is that there's nothing really wrong with hitting the max values. You just have to be careful because you might blow out entire areas and lose some detail. For example, I took this photo of a snow cheetah, but I got the snow too bright, so it's all washed out. A better photo would have had a little bit of detail here instead of just being pure white snow. Can I fix this? Not really. If it's clipped, it's gone. But if it's not entirely clipped, you can go into shadows and highlights and try to bring back the washed out areas. Then just mask in the bit that you want and uh, hopefully get some of that detail back. But you can see that when I did this, I created some artifacts and it doesn't look great because I just didn't have the detail in the original JPEG. It was too far gone. Those highlights were completely washed out. However, if I had shot this in raw format, then I could have brought back those details because raw files have more data. Look, open up a raw photo and you see you get this menu with a ton of options. Uh, you can access this menu even when you don't shoot in raw, but you're not going to have as much data to work with because JPEGs just don't have that information. So check this out. Last weekend I was spying on this obese couple. I think they were on a Tinder date or something. But, as you can see, my exposure is all wrong because I was shooting straight into a sunset. So let's see if we can fix this. I'm going to cut the shadows so that I can see these people. Now they aren't completely silhouetted. I have some detail there. I can fix the white balance, which is really cool. If I want to color grade it, I might make the shadows blue, just so I can get this color palette of blue and orange. I'll admit that this is not a good photo. Remember that HDR trend? Kind of reminds me of that. It's basically just cutting the shadows and boosting the vibrance. Pretty cheesy stuff. I'm not a fan. But anyways, let's get back to values. So, I can edit my values here, or I can import this and edit it in the normal Photoshop window by going to Image, Adjustment, Curves. Now, your curves are basically just a 2D representation of the histogram that we were just looking at. So you have a little bit more flexibility here. And to try to explain this, I want to make another comparison to music. In a very broad sense, a musician might boost his bass and treble to get an aggressive contrast sound. 
Or he might boost the mids to get a more natural, uh, smoother um, sound. It's more focused on vocals. So let's see if we can do that with our image. Let's start by making it super high contrast and aggressive. Now, unlike an EQ, I'm not just gonna pull up the bottom and top. Okay, I'm actually gonna keep the endpoints locked where they are because if I move those around, I'm gonna either get the hazy effect or the clipping effect that I was getting before. I'm also gonna lock the middle and then I'm gonna make the darks darker and the lights lighter. So you can see that the lights curve up and the darks curve down. That's what's gonna give me the high contrast. Now I get this aggressive, saturated look. But you can see that my black keys here are kind of muddled because those values were pushed closer together. So let's try the opposite. I'm going to, again, keep the midpoint about where it is, and I'm going to lower the highs and raise the lows. Okay, so this is desaturated now, so I'm going to boost the vibrance just so I have a good comparison here. Okay, so you can see that compared to the high contrast version, I have more detail in the black keys here, and it's a smoother image overall. So depending on what you're going for, I think either of these are decent photos. I can also adjust the contrast of each primary color. And I've done this in other videos where I basically do the same high contrast trick where I boost the reds in the highlights and I cut the reds in my shadows. And that gives me uh, cool shadows, which I think is a nice look. If you want warm shadows, I suppose you could do the same thing with the green and blue channel by uh, just cutting out the blue and green from your darks. Then you get those those warm shadows, which is a, also an interesting look. But there's actually an easier way to do this. You can just go to Filter, Raw Camera Filter. And then we're back at that window where we have just insane options. So you can have fun, you know, just doing a lot of crazy stuff here. Um, and then before you get too carried away, look up here, look at your histogram from before. You see these two icons? Click these to toggle your danger areas. That's gonna show you the clipping threshold. And you see, oh shit, maybe I went a little too dark. Maybe I went a little too light. And then you can pull it back. And I don't think I can go any further with this without talking about color theory, which I don't want to get into in this video. So let's just stop it right here. Um, thanks for watching. I know this topic is pretty dry. I probably should have thrown a couple of fuck words in this video just to keep things interesting. I don't know why you guys like that. It's weird. But anyways, I hope this helps. And I'll see you later.